Hi guys, and welcome to another installment of me wrapping up books. Today we're just going to do another five book classic wrap up of fiction I've been reading this year. I think you know the drill at this point, so let's talk about some recent reads of mine. The first book I'm going to talk about is The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. This is a young adult mystery thriller. It takes place in this town where a few years ago, a group of cheerleaders like all die within a really short amount of time. A couple of them died in a car accident together. A couple of them were murdered. One of them committed suicide. They were all in the same friend group and it's just super bizarre. The main character we're following is the younger sister of one of the girls who died. She starts questioning the circumstances surrounding these deaths and it's kind of about her investigating it and figuring out what happened. I would say that I mostly really liked this book. There were some things I was questioning in the beginning of it because it starts out with a relationship between the main character who is a teenage girl and an older guy who starts working at her school so it's like a very taboo relationship and that made me really uncomfortable to start out with. I feel like as the book went on it addressed this more directly and I think took a good stance on it. I really liked the mystery of this book. I was very intrigued by how everything was going to come together and play out all throughout the investigation process. I really enjoyed the deep digging that the main character of this book does. I really, really love mysteries where the characters are really snooping around and like doing investigative work. The main character kind of develops a friendship with another classmate of hers and I really liked the relationship that they developed and I really liked this side character who's kind of mysterious. And as you get to learn about her, I really grew to like her. We also have kind of like a flashback narrative where we jump back in time and the book is actually narrated by the older sister of the main character and she kind of gives her perspective on certain things. You get to see kind of how her life was playing out before she died. I honestly didn't like those chapters as much and I don't feel like they gave enough insight to be worth it. I didn't really think we needed a split narrative at all. I don't know if I have a lot more to say about this one, but overall I ended up really liking it. It was a solid mystery, solid entertainment. I thought it was pretty compelling all the way through. I think I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was pretty good. The next book that I'm going to talk about is Beast by Bree Spangler. This is a young adult contemporary and we're following this teenage boy who was kind of bullied at school and treated differently for his body. He's like super tall, super massive, very hairy. Like people call him the beast because he's just this scary looking dude. Through a series of events, he ends up going to this like group therapy for teens and he meets this girl there and a romantic relationship starts to form between them. So the love interest of this book is a trans girl and the main character of the book does not know this until it is kind of revealed to him halfway through the novel. As far as I know, the book doesn't say that the love interest is trans. There definitely are clues and it's very much alluded to, um, but I don't think you technically learn as a reader until this reveal halfway through. I felt a little bit iffy about how it kind of felt like a plot twist. In the book's defense though, it does say that this character is transgender in the synopsis. It's not trying to make it a plot twist necessarily. They let you know if you read the synopsis, but if you didn't read the synopsis, like, I don't know, it just came across a little bit questionably. So basically, we have like the first half of the book, which is this main character struggling with himself, struggling with a lot of things about his life. And then we have the beginnings of like a romance. And then when he finds out that the girl he's been dating is trans, he kind of freaks out and the rest of the book is just about him struggling with that. And it's about them just trying to resolve that. I had mixed feelings about this book. When the main character of this book finds out that the girl he's been dating is trans, he freaks out. And there 
are so many transphobic thoughts that go through his head. His actions are really scary. The way that uh, people in his class kind of react to this and like the mob mentality of transphobia in this book is like extremely upsetting to read about. There's just a part of me that wonders who this book is for and who it's gonna benefit. I know that there have been Own Voices reviews of this book that have been positive. I know that there have been Own Voices reviews of this book that have been negative. So it's really hard to say. I think that a lot of the love interests like experiences in this book were written about accurately and well. But I also just struggle with the fact that the main character of this book is basically like going on the journey of like, can I accept the idea of someone being trans? And it's just like, I don't know if I really wanted to read it. I think I rated this book three stars when I finished it. I was of very mixed opinion, but there were aspects of this book that I wanted to support, and aspects of this book that I wanted to like. I feel like maybe this is more of like a 2.5. I just have very warring opinions on it. A lot of the characters in this book are just frustrating. That is just, I don't know how else to describe it. There were side characters that I really liked for most of the book and then all of them eventually kind of let me down and it was really frustrating. I just, I don't know, I think I wanted more from this or something different from this to be honest. The only character I really liked was the love interest but I just wanted something better for her because I felt like she deserved to be with a guy who is so much better than the protagonist of this book. So I just like didn't really care about the relationship. I would say that the relationship was the main focus of this book all the way through and I don't know, I felt a little lukewarm about it. I just don't know who I would recommend this book to. Next up is Two Night Owl from Dogfish by Holly Goldberg Sloan and Meg Wallitzer. This is an epistolary novel. It's a middle grade book. It's following these two girls. They find out that their fathers are long distance dating after meeting at like a conference for work. One of them lives in New York, one of them lives in California, and they start emailing each other, trying to figure out a way to break up their parents because they don't want their lives to change. They end up going to the same summer camp because their parents want them to meet and bond. The book kind of follows them before the summer camp, the camp is kind of in the middle of the book, and then everything that happens after going to the camp together. This was so much fun. I really loved it. It was hilarious. I found it to be so charming and funny and just super entertaining. I love the two main characters. I thought they had such like wonderful personalities. They were smart, kind of precocious, neurotic at times, just really enjoyable, very big characters. I loved kind of getting to know what was going on in their lives and getting to know like all the side characters like through their letters. There were a few other letters and like other found documents kind of like mixed in, but the majority of this book is emails back and forth between these two girls. It was so fun to watch their initial relationship that was like very antagonistic and how it developed into a friendship that was just so pure, so cute. I loved it. I loved that there was like queer representation kind of in like the background with both of their fathers being single gay dads. I just had so much fun reading this all the way through. I think it's a kid's book that honestly maybe would appeal to adults more. I feel like there was just like some really smart humor in here that I just so appreciated as an adult. I think this book would also be fun for kids, like definitely would recommend it for kids, but like if you are an adult who likes middle grade, I think this is a really good one to pick up because I feel like this is just middle grade fiction that would appeal so much to an adult reader. I think maybe a big part of that is that the two main characters are oblivious to some things that they're not realizing because they're just kids, but if you're kind of reading between the lines, like you're gonna pick up a lot about their parents and a lot about different things that are kind of going on in the background. My one big criticism of this book was that I just didn't like the way it ended. I really thought something was gonna happen and then something else happened and it just felt really random. It didn't feel 
like a good satisfying ending to me. I just wanted something else for the end of this book and it just disappointed me. But other than that, I thought that this was delightful. Like it was just such a good time. I really loved it. I loved all of the quirkiness about this book. I loved the way it was told in letter format. Loved it. I thought it was super solid. Definitely would recommend four stars. The next book that I want to talk about is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is, I feel like, one of the biggest releases of the year. Everybody is reading this book. I was definitely excited for it as well. I've definitely gotten into Taylor Jenkins Reid in the past couple years, and overall I really liked this book. It's definitely not my favorite Taylor Jenkins read, but I thought it was really solid. For those who are unaware, Daisy Jones and the Six is historical fiction. It follows like a fictional band called the Six and a fictional singer, Daisy Jones. And it is about their musical collaboration in like the 70s. It's very much like Fleetwood Mac era, like inspired sort of book. It is very much about like the 70s rock and roll lifestyle and it follows these characters and their rise to fame their experiences as like really famous musicians and just all of the behind the scenes drama with them and their band and the album that they created together the entire thing is told in like a interview format so it's like a kind of like a script the interviewer poses a question and then the characters have like their names and all the dialogue that they said. The audiobook of this book is a full cast and it is super well done. I know everybody is recommending the audiobook. Um, I am as well. It is a really good audiobook. I do wish that there was like a character glossary for me to refer to because there were too many male members of this band and I could not tell them apart other than the like lead dude. Like I knew some of the qualities that these male members of the band had, but I couldn't remember like which one had each character trait. I really liked this book. It was super entertaining. I thought that the like interview format kind of added a fun element to it, especially with the full cast audio. It was just really easy to like read in giant chunks. It stayed super interesting and it was just such a readable book. I think that Taylor Jenkins Reid has like cracked the code for me on how to enjoy books about celebrities, like fictional celebrities, because she writes books about fictional celebrities that are all historical fiction, and that actually has been working for me with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and now Daisy Jones and the Six. Both those books take place in eras that I don't exist in and so it's a lot easier for me to just accept them. I don't really have that like disconnect of them not being real. It just feels like they so easily could be real because that time period doesn't have anything to do with me. So the music industry and the fake celebrities in this book I didn't have a problem with and it was really fun to read about. This book is very much just like sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That is, I feel like, probably pretty accurate. I think she did a ton of research going into this book. It made for an entertaining read, but I do feel like this book was not that deep. I feel like a lot of people who have read this got a lot more of an emotional reaction to it than I did. I just didn't really get that. Like, I really enjoyed this book. I have no major criticisms about it. I thought it was a great read, but I didn't feel like there were very deep themes in this book. The relationships, I just didn't care about that much. It was fun to get swept away in, and yes, I did care about the characters, and yes, I did care about some of the relationships in this book. It wasn't like it was devoid of emotion or anything like that, but I do think that this book was like way more shallow than a lot of her other works, just in terms of the themes and the human relationships. So yeah, I really liked this book, but it didn't leave much of a lasting impression. It was more of like a surface level enjoyment. I gave this, I think 3.5 out of five stars, really solid. I had a great time. I would recommend it for sure. It is being turned into a TV series, I think. And I think that's gonna be awesome. I'm really excited for it. And I definitely am excited to see whatever Taylor Jenkins Reid writes next. And then the last thing I have to wrap up is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. 
I think she pronounces her name Gillian Flynn as much as I want to say Gillian Flynn. This is a like novella or technically a short story. I think it was originally published in a short story anthology, um, but it's it's pretty lengthy for a short story. It's like a really small little novelette, if you will. And it's about this woman who kind of has like a, a fake business where she pretends to be a psychic and makes money doing that, like swindling people. This woman comes to her one day and is having issues with her house. She's having issues with her stepson. She thinks her house is maybe haunted. And so our protagonist sets up this plan to cleanse her house, but she gets a little bit more than she bargained for and things start getting a little bit creepier than she thought they would. I don't really know how to talk about this too much without spoiling it because it's really short. There's not much to it. But I'll just say that I thought it was going one way and I kind of wanted it to go one way and then it went in another direction. And the way that this book ended, especially, I was extremely disappointed by. I could see how somebody would think it was a really cool ending and like love it, but I hated it. I thought it was like a cop-out ending and I, I, I just thought it was terrible and it made me really mad. I think I have realized that I'm not a fan of Gillian Flynn as a writer. Granted, all I've read by her is Gone Girl. Um, this, so this would be like me giving her a second chance. Her writing to me comes across as somebody who believes they're a feminist and likes to like revel in that, but doesn't have a very wide definition of what feminism actually is. <laughs> That's just the feeling I get reading her books. I feel like her books are overly edgy and I'm not a big fan. I didn't really like this in the way that it was written or the mystery of it. I was really into the mystery for a while, but as you know now, it, just the way that it wrapped up left me really disappointed. So I kind of liked this for a portion of it. I really was getting into it and I thought it was going to be really good, but eh, it just let me down. I just think I don't like Gillian Flynn. I would maybe try Sharp Objects. If I am given reason to believe that it's different from Gone Girl and this book, especially because there's an adaptation of it that looks kind of good. So I might be inclined to read it and then watch the adaptation. Um, but if I read Sharp Objects and I also disliked that book, that would for sure confirm that Gillian Flynn is just like not for me at all. Gave this one like, two, maybe 2.5. I think it's probably more of a two. It's extremely short, so I don't really have anything else to say about it. So I guess that's it. Those are five more books that I've read in 2019 and what I thought about them. Let me know your thoughts on any of these if you have read them, but I think that's it for now. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!